Ju, ju, ju. Hello, my beautiful Fumi Nation. How are you? How are we? My name is Fumi De Salovold. For those of you that are stopping by for the very first time, you guys are so very welcome indeed. Are we living and loving the beat, my darlings? Very simple, really and truly, very simple. I am using Juvia's Place, the coffee palette. Live for it. Boom, boom, boom. Yep. And then, and then, yes, I mix the two up and then colored green, rebellious nudes. These two palettes are my go-to. You can do various, multiple, nude, chocolatey, smoky eyes that works. The dress is by Zara. I love it because the sleeve is right up into the armpit. It's a wonderful dress that I've had for a minute and a half. There you go. This is what it looks like. This is what it looks like from the back. Da, 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 da. And then this is the front. It's a lovely shift dress and it works. Ooh. So, why are we here? I'll tell you why we're here. Brian McKnight. Yep, you do. Brian McKnight has been in the news because he has done one or two off color things that has drawn the attention of many to criticize him, or should we say, call him out. Brian McKnight, I'm, first and foremost, I love Brian McKnight's music. He reminds me very much of the late Luther Vandross. And if you had told me that um, Brian McKnight, some way, somehow, down the line, with all of those love songs that he sang, that um, he would be associated with something like this, I wouldn't have believed it. But here we are. So Brian McKnight put a picture up on his Instagram to say that um, he was very proud of his stepdaughter. The lady that he is now married to had two children that she brought into the blended family because Brian McKnight himself has four children from a previous marriage. So she had two, he had four, and I think, I think they have you no know, a boy together, Brian McKnight Jr. Anyway, he said that because of this wonderful stepdaughter of his, he was so proud to become a girl dad for the first time. But that is not true because he has a daughter already from his previous marriage. As a matter of fact, himself and this daughter were actually in court because she sued him for defamation. Very bizarre. She sued him for defamation and he also came out talking about his daughter had had some sort of incestuous relationship with her cousin. He cut them off. He made it very clear that I think one was 22 or 25 or 26 or 27, I can't remember, something, something like that. And he gave them two years where he booted them out of the house, you're on your own, and he financed them for those two years while he paid for all of their bills. And when the two years came up, they still hadn't done anything as far as he was concerned. Um, he also went on to talk about, I am a great uh, father. He had not missed any monthly payments that he was to shell out to his children. And that this for him, he was actually telling us as a badge of honor, as if to say, I haven't missed anything. I have paid out every single month. I've not missed one. I've given them everything that they have wanted. And um, I'm going to just repeat a couple of things here. Social media reacts to Brian McKnight not acknowledging his biological children he had before his current marriage. And he bought his stepdaughter a beautiful car. And he says, today we celebrate you, Jules, on your birthday. Your mom and I couldn't be prouder of you, and I couldn't ask for a better daughter than you. Happy birthday to the best daughter ever. Love you a zillion. Goes on to say, family, family, family. 
my husband, my sons and daughter of the most beautiful day of our lives. Throw back to our wedding day with my sons, happiest day of my life. I love our life, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, this is what all he puts out there. So what is, what is, um, why all of the hoopla, you say? Because he has disowned his children. He said it himself that um, doesn't talk to them anymore. And um, he now fully takes on the responsibility of his stepchildren. Hey guys, it's Brian McKnight here. Uh, I've been traveling about 17 hours to Guam. I have a concert tonight and I got off the plane to some of the most heinous craziness I've ever seen in my life that my oldest son, Brian, would post that I'm abandoning my children. And the reason why I suppose is because I have a new family. And I guess this stems from a post that I made the other day about my son, Jack, who I'm very proud of, which isn't to say I'm not, and haven't been proud of my other children, but I was proud of this one for the things that he did that day. But we'll get back to that in a second. Anyone who knows me knows over the last 20 years, 30 years now, as a matter of fact, that I've been there for my children every step of the way until recently. And let's be clear, my two sons are 30 and 27, not 12, not 13, but 30 and 27. Now, my daughter's about to turn 18. That's another story I'll get to in a second. Uh, I've never missed a day of child support. I've never done anything adverse to my children whatsoever. I've always been there. I've always been there with advice, whether they took it or not. I have always been the sounding board and I've always been the one that tried to, to help them achieve whatever dreams they were wanting to reach out for. Um, I guess one of my only faults is that I gave my children everything that I didn't have in the hopes that they would appreciate it because I know how much I would have appreciated it when I was their age. Um, I would tell you as parents out there, entitling your children is probably one of the worst things you can do. And I know I am guilty of that. Um, for whatever reasons, I am guilty of that. Um, tough love is a tough thing as a parent to try to institute to your children because you want to help them as much as you can. And I did as much as I possibly could. When I stopped doing that for them, BJ was 25 and Nico was 22. And it wasn't like I completely cut them off at that point. That, that happened much later. but. I've been there. Um, when I put them out of my house, I gave them an apartment for two years. And I said, guys, this is it. This is the time to grow up. I'm giving you two years. I'm going to pay for everything for two years, but you're going to have to work or do something because at the end of those two years, that's going to be it. It's time to be men here, guys. It's time to grow up. At the end of those two years, they hadn't done any of it. Um, it was just right around the time that Leilani and I had gotten together. Leilani was working at Children's Hospital. And let's be clear, Leilani has been one of the only people who's been an advocate to keeping us together, to keeping us having a relationship because she wants to have the nuclear family as much as I did. And they have spit in her face at every turn. She got them jobs at the hospital, $18 an hour with benefits and with the option of the hospital actually paying for them to go back to school. They said, and I quote, that they knew they didn't, they didn't want to stop smoking and they would have to pass a drug test. And the day I had the doctors looking into it, Nico's on there, you know, taking a big puff, of which is fine. If you want to smoke, that's fine. I'm not saying that I'm saying that that's bad. If that's your choice, that's your choice. But what I'm telling you is that we have been advocates for them every step of the way. Now, let's go to the part where we have been estranged. Again, we talk about abandonment. We're not, it's, I'm not abandoning them. We are estranged, which happens more often than not in this particular situation. BJ broke into our home a few months ago and he put X's on the eyes of our wedding photos. And then he put a photo of my first wedding on Leilani's vanity. It was at that moment. And after I heard him say, and was pointed to from other friends of mine that saw his posts on social media, that he, he basically said that I was better off dead to him than alive. I was more valuable to him dead than alive. And that was the end of me dealing with him. If you look at my Instagram, you'll see that not my last video, but the video before that, 42, the song was written by Brian and I, and it was directed, the video, by Nico. And I went on and I said how proud I was of Nico at the time, and I really, really was. He did an awesome job in that video. Um, 
even before that, two, less than two years ago, these are the two gentlemen who stood up for me as my best man in my wedding. So abandonment, deadbeat dad, I've, like, I'll reiterate, I've never missed a day of child support. I've been there every step of the way. BJ, he, he talks about Jack's new car. Jack, BJ had three brand new cars before he was 22. But I'm not talking about material things. Cause none of this has anything to do with money. It's about respect. Respect goes both ways. And even in family, there's a line that shouldn't and should not ever be crossed. Uh, it, it's crazy to me that people will just believe anything. And I thought it was important to set the record straight and let you guys know that abandonment has nothing to do with any of this. Deadbeat dad, I've been there every step of the way. And let's also remember that these kids are 30 and 27, not 12. It's time for grown men to be grown men. And I'm sorry that tough love happens to, to be this way. Um, and it's, I do wish them the best. I want them to have and to reach their dreams and their full potential, but like, any other man in the world, you, you got to go out there and you got to take it. Um, as far as my daughter is concerned, um, you know, her mother, if you look back at my Instagram, she was a part of this family too, with Jack and Julie and Leilani and myself. And unfortunately, along the way, a couple of years ago, I got wind that there was an older cousin who was above 18, who was quite possibly having sex with her. So I called, as a father should, to the, the state office for, for children's affairs there in Arizona, and I never heard anything back, but the next thing that her mother did was to block all of us from her social media, from her phone, and completely estranged her from us. So what that told me was they didn't want me to be involved in her life that way. So to see the post that she said, considering that her mother only had a child with me for money in the first place, and I'll reiterate this, I have not missed a child support payment. She goes to one of the most incredible private schools in Arizona. Um, so I don't know where this is all coming from, but I thought that I needed to let everybody know that there's another side to this story. Um, you can choose to believe what you want. Uh, I, I thought that I would lay it out there for you. Anything that I say is actual and factual. All you have to do is Google Brian McKnight and Sons and you'll see us singing all over YouTube. Um, go back and look at my Instagram. Go back a couple of years, you'll see that I posted about all of my children. Um, but remember that these kids, these boys are, they're grown men and tough love is exactly what it is, it's tough love. So thanks everybody, thanks for listening and I hope that that gives you a little bit more perspective. I think it's sad. I think it's sad. I think it's sad that you went that route. I think that you are always a parent no matter how old they become. I think that you should always be there for your children. It's a life oath. And I do know this for a fact, that the first man in your life that you love is your father. So for Brian McKnight to acknowledge his stepdaughter deliberately, deliberately fly it into the face of his daughter that for the first time he is a girl dad indirectly saying you do not exist to me you're dead to me that was what he was telling his elder daughter and there's a lot of therapy that's needed in that family and for her. I will say this to her directly. You are healthy, you have brothers, live your life and do not punish yourself by trying to get any kind of validation from this man who is biologically your father. It's a very bitter pill to swallow and you might never ever get over it. But as you go out into this world and you find your way and you find a man to marry, know that all men are not like your father. Because I don't think no matter what the situation is that you disown your kids. I don't think you do that. 
I have seen mothers go to prisons to see their sons. Whatever he did, you hear it so many times. He's my son. He's my son. She's my daughter. I think also for Brian to make this so public is what disturbs me because every family has their own laundry that you keep behind closed doors. We all got one or two family members, but you keep it within. That Brian feels so comfortable to air this out about his offspring is what bothers me. I don't know what they could have done. And like he said, there's always more to every story. That is true. There's always more. But I tell you this, you can pry my mouth open with an ax. I won't say one word. My family, I won't. Doesn't matter what it is, it's nobody's business. That's where I'm coming from. You've married again, you have this other family, so that other family doesn't exist to you. It happens a lot when there's a really bitter, terrible divorce. By extension, the parents where they should be treasuring the children and be thinking of them first, they don't even think of them at all. And by extension, because they're the children that he had with this woman that he no longer loves. I am not saying that this is the case, but I've seen it many a time. You just make a clean slate and you wipe out. He says all that they were really mean to his current wife. As unacceptable as that is, that's not their mama. They really don't have to do too much. That's not their moms. I'm just so disappointed. I'm so disappointed because, Brian, let us see that your children did certain things that were unacceptable, even unforgivable. You as a parent are old and should know better. You as a parent should know that you don't leave these kind of messages on your Instagram for people to read when everybody knows that you've got other children. I don't care whether they're black, white, blue, green, red, yellow. I don't care about that. A child is a child. A child is a child. Even when they're adults, they're your children. They're an extension of you. To disregard them like that, it also flashes back on you. I cannot throw away my child. I'm throwing away me. I don't find value in me. No matter if they steer wrong, right, indifferent, some kids, it takes longer than others. But why are we parents? Because we are honored and we are blessed to have unconditional love. It's unconditional. Regardless of what it is, if nobody stands up for that child, I will stand up for my child. There was a post I put up the other day. I put a lot of posts in the community uh, quotes that resonate with me and resonate with other Fumi Nation mothers and fathers. And one of them was, as a mother, we're not afraid of death. What we are afraid of is leaving our child in this world without having anybody love them the way we do. It struck a chord with me. Because I was saying to myself, ah, oh, well, you know, if like I'm 98 or 99, I'm praying, I'm trying to get there. Adrian will be 50. Okay, fine, that's good. He's 50. He can be on his own. Then I said to myself, no, he can't be on his own. He's only 50. They just don't grow up in your eyes. They will always be your baby. Right, wrong, indifferent. My parents are the same with me. I remember when Daddy Vold was the same with Ula. Ula, I haven't seen you. He came right to the house. Ula, I haven't seen you. Where, where have you been? And I think, I, I forget. He brought food. He brought uh, little things for age. For, he brought little things for Ula. Socks and stuff like that. And, I, and, you know, in my mind, I was like, but Ula's a grown man. No, for me. 
that's still his baby boy. So if Ola forgets something, he has socks. <laughs> and he brought food for us, just in case Fubi didn't cook, the two of you can eat. It's not a good look. It's not a good look, Brian. You can never win this. It doesn't matter what these kids did. The way you are showing us how you want to justify what you're doing, it shows the callousness of who you are. And I would give advice to your wife, his present wife, if he can do this to his children, you don't stand a chance. You and your kids that he's talking about, I am now a girl dad, he will dismiss her just like that. Because his own biological children don't mean anything to him. Okay, you're playing house now. It's always nice when you're playing house. It's very telling, I have come to see, of how a man behaves with his children. That is one. It is very telling of a man how he behaves and respects his former wife and his children. It's very telling of him. There was no need, no need whatsoever for you to try and get or sway us in your direction against your children. You should be the protector. You should swallow it because I'll do anything for my kids. I will stand in the line of fire. Even when I know they are wrong and they did it, I will say I did it to cover them. Face me, don't face my children. That's what I'm trying to say. That your daughter has to take you to court for defamation. That you opened your mouth and said that she was having an incestuous relationship with a cousin. That's so beneath a father. And that is why I have said so many times on this channel, you can plant a seed in a woman's womb and a child will come forth. That sometimes is the only contribution that some men have done. A father is a person, a man, that raises a child all the way till he passes. Not when she's 20 something, no. Because you will walk her down the aisle, you will be there to, when she has her children, you will be there when things are difficult. And that's what I feel parenthood really is. It's the hard times. It's the difficult times. It's the late nights. It's the early mornings. It's the school fees. It's the food on the table. It's picking them up and their friends. Going to buy him one ice cream and buying for all of the friends. It's making friends with other children's parents because our kids are friends. That is a parent that forgives, forgives, always forgives. You have to forgive. You have to forget because you're nurturing these children to become good adults and in turn do the same for their children. And you get the honor of being a father and a grandfather and sometimes a great grandfather and you see your legacy and you see the hard work and you see the hard choices you see the sacrifices you see the times you kept quiet you see when you did it not for now but for the greater good that Brian McKnight is not you you have failed these children and I'm so disappointed. Um, I know that you make your money through going on tour. Nobody's really checking for you now. You know, there are others out there. And um, you, for me, I feel you're just coming out to justify yourself because of ticket sales. 
Because that's how you earn your living right about now. Have a conscience. Think about what you're doing. These are your children, all of your children. You should be so grateful. You should be so grateful indeed. Walk in the path of gratitude. Nobody throws away kids. And when I say that, I know that there are stories of. What I'm saying is that it's not right. It's not right. And um, it's unfortunate because I've heard so many whispers now of how much of an unpleasant person you are. It's so, you know, it's funny how you have an idea about somebody and they turn out to be the exact opposite. What a shame. What a shame. Anyway, um, he's come out with a response and said, you know, not everything that, that, that it seems. Brian, be quiet. Just be quiet. It's enough now, okay? Because um, you went to court with your daughter for defamation and you settled out of court. I, very disappointing. Very, 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 very disappointing. As far as I'm concerned, to treat your children like that in the face of your new family with your stepchildren, your new children, is uh, very disappointing. All children should be loved, no matter what. As a matter of fact, they should have all been brought together. And if there are hiccups here and there, I am going to lay it squarely on your shoulders. Yes, I am. You're the parent. All right, my darlings, let me know in the comment section what you think about this. You guys brought it to my attention. And uh, you know me. I'm for the children. I am for the children. I can keep mute. I really can for the sake of the children. And um, it's not right. It is so not right for the way that Brian is behaving. I don't know what the children did. I don't know and I don't really care. What I'm saying is as a parent, I haven't seen... You know what? For a parent to come out like this, a celebrity that is, and behave like this, is odd. And it really is telling of him. That's all I can say. All of my love, darlings, don't forget to like, to subscribe, hit the notification button, and um, I will see you guys sooner than later. Did I tell you the dresses from Zara? I think I did, because I know you guys will ask me in the comment section. You know, I wanted to put a belt on it. I can't find it, but there's a belt that goes with this. I don't know where it is. But yeah, I'll see you guys sooner than later, okay? All of my love. Bye. And we're going to be doing fashion. I'm going to come out with spring dresses, stuff that you guys can wear, that can transition from work. And you can go out with your girlfriends. Yeah, you can make it work. Yeah, all my love. Bye.